Garland Jeffries, welcome to E-Town. Good to, good to hear you, man. Good to have you here. So sweet to be here. Yeah. Really. So your, uh, your, your latest record, 14 Steps to Harlem, it's kind of about your childhood. Your oh, dad, what a childhood. You know, tell us, about, tell us about what it was like when you were a kid. I know your dad worked in Harlem. Your mother worked at the, uh, the sugar factory. Yeah. Domino's. Domino's. Yeah. Domino's sugar factory. See the domino sign. And uh, it was rough, you know. It's, uh, he was a very tough dad. Painful. It was a painful situation. Uh, something I don't really talk about that much. Uh, but recently, I uh, just thought, just decided to, to talk more about it, you know. I think I've been inspired by Bruce on some level, you know, to write a story like a life, like a biography, you know. They need several volumes for this. <laughs> Let me tell you. Soon to be a major motion picture. <laughs> who you would, bet, who, man. Who I'm going to cash in big. Yeah. <laughs> My name is going to be in lights. Yeah. Listen, I want to ask you about something really practical. So you, uh, as I understand it, your dad was, was tough, as you say. He was kind of a disciplinarian. But he, uh, he got up and he, he, went to, he went to work in Harlem. You guys were living in Brooklyn then. Um, and he would leave early and come back late, and your mom would go to work. So when you didn't have school, what did you do during the day? Was that when I was running numbers? Uh, maybe before that. <laughs> that was from my grandfather, Shorty Bolden. And, uh, you know, it's not a tale, but they tell me that the house that I was living in, which I just visited not too long ago, she, in Sheepshead Bay, is that one? In Sheepshead Bay. I visited yeah. Sheepshead Bay the other day. And uh, they say that my, my brother tells me that, uh, that my, own, my grandfather won the, won the game, in a, won the house, in a, a three-story house in a card game. Wow. Wow. So I come from good stock. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're a survivor. <laughs> uh, well, you do talk about, and some of the songs in the, in the new record talk about you know, like being in the schoolyard and being shorter than some of the other kids or being, uh, you know, but, but there, I kind of get a sense that the, the racial divide wasn't so, so strong, that there could be, you know, like your mother's Puerto Rican, uh, your father's, you know, black from Harlem, but there were white kids. There's all these kids, and when you're in school, you're just hanging out, right? I had a very mixed up uh, background. I have a very, you know... Uh, my first father, my second father, my sister, who I didn't see for many, many years, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing, like right. a broken home, you know. Yeah. I visited my, my sister for the first time. It was amazing when we did it and what that felt like, you yeah. know. And then, and then she's come and stayed with us at our house. And uh, uh, I've been a little delinquent. I've been enormously busy lately. I need to go down to see her. Uh, in, uh, uh, in the Carolinas. Yeah. Uh, were you a little delinquent when you were a kid? I tried very hard to not be. Yeah. <laughs> were you singing when you were a kid? I started, I started, I started when I started listening. Uh, to do on the radio. groups and stuff? And yeah, well, Frankie Lyman was my idol. Frankie Lyman yeah. and the teenagers. Frankie Lyman, I'm not a know-it-all. Yeah. Don't know why the teardrops fall. Don't know what's beyond the blue. <laughs> I only know that I love you. Stuff like that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Frankie Lyman was also a bit of a cautionary tale because he uh, got addicted to heroin when he was 15. That's right. And he died at 25. That's right. And uh, went out on his own. But, but man, oh man, could he sing. Amazing voice. Yeah, you know. I mean, I wanted to be him. Yeah, you know. He was. I. He was my model. You know, from that point of view. You know, he's. Like, was he your age, more or less? Well, no, he wasn't. I. I, I was younger. Yeah. When he came on the scene. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, when I, you know, when I got older, right. I wanted to be like him. Yeah. I thought I looked like him, and I wanted to be like yeah. him. Yeah. Well, it's cool. And then um, your dad, despite whatever else he may have done, one, one thing that he did that I think you probably appreciate is that he was, he was not fooling around when he said, 
by the way, you're going to go to Syracuse University. Yeah. That was a surprise. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, my dad, you know, like I've been thinking about this. Every once in a while I go into, into it. The, 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 the experience of being beaten as a child, the, uh, the, you know, the misunderstanding uh, of father and son, uh, the, uh, uh, him coming from po- poverty, uh, him uh, uh, coming from a, a, a really Harlem when none of us now know what it is, including right. me. Yeah. You know, and uh, he suffered. He suffered. Sleeping on, uh, in the wet rain on the rooftops in Harlem, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so I know he had it rough, uh, but I also know that, uh, you know, I have a daughter who's 21. Savannah Ray Jeffries, a fantastic kid, goes to Wesleyan. You guys stay away from her. <laughs> I'm telling you, stay away from her. Besides, her boyfriend's six foot nine. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it really is true. <laughs> well, let me ask you about um, about your your uh, you go to you go to college. You meet Lou Reed. You guys become friends. You come back into New York. You start getting your scene together. Suddenly, you're hanging out in that crowd. You're playing with John Cale. Yeah. Uh, you put together a band from a bunch of guys from up in Woodstock. Grinders Switch. Right. Stands the last. The great stands the last yeah. on piano. One of the most amazing piano players. Uh, you know, he, he was really the piano player of piano players, you know. Yeah. And then I found out the link between Stan Zaleste and um, oh, the Canadians. Were, were the, Ro- Robbie, Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson, the band. The band, yes. But, but the, uh, 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 the piano player, Stan Zaleste, was just incredible. Garth Hudson was inspired by him or something like that. Just, yeah. Levon Helm. Levon Helm, yeah. He was part of that group, too, yeah. you know. Levon, uh, I remember Levon Helm said to me one night, he, he had a, when he lived in Woodstock it, on the farm, he had, a, he had a, a room, special room. It was Levon's room. And uh, he, uh, he said, Garland Jeffries, man, you better save your money. Don't be like me. I'm poor, man. He was serious, too. And he said, it, he said it more than once, you know. And uh, he was very kind to me. And, uh, Did you do it? He, yeah. Did you save your money? I've got some uh, U.S. bonds. You know, yeah, like all right. <laughs> right. Uh, cool. I don't deal with Merrill Lynch anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I blew that wide. <laughs> Listen, we, I want to get back to songs here in a minute, but um, I want to touch briefly on your new record. You've got a song uh, about dreamers. Yeah. And I know that the issues that you've been dealing with, you know, ever since, um, you know, your, your, your reference to the song, um, to the phrase buckwheat, that, you know, yeah. it's a while ago. Painful stories, painful, yeah. painful stories of your own experience dealing with racism, dealing with uh, short-sightedness, blindness in a way. It's my specialty, I must say, you know. Uh, uh, it, Getting picked on? It became my specialty. Well, I, I'll tell you one incident. There's a candy store, which I went to just the other day, that doesn't exist anymore, but it's a PS254, uh, right near, Ocean, right near uh, Ocean Parkway, around there. And uh, uh, the, the, the guy at the candy store, I, I walked into the candy store. It was just a kid. He says, get out of here, Blackie. That was the kind of thing that many black folks hear, you know, uh, as you know. I mean, that's, that's the most obvious stuff. We all know this information, you know, you know. But like I tell you, when I, when I saw that whole Trump, uh, uh, the whole thing, of, you know, when he did that, that, that big rally and, and then... Uh, I mean, it's really referring to the fact that, from what I gathered, that Trump was part of the, uh, uh, Fred Trump, the father, was part of the Klan. That's what I understand. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, race haters, race haters, people who, uh, you know, when the Italians came in, people hated them. 
when, when then the chinks came in, people hated them. All these kinds of uh, walls that we've had to climb and had to, you know. I mean, obviously, I would say that this group here is a relatively liberal group, you know, uh, you know that I would vote with. You know, the, you know the people that uh, that I am. You know, the same. We're we're very similar. You know, but I have heard. I, I've had uh, 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 some damage in that in that world. You know, for, you know. Uh, yeah, you've so you called names. Uh, yeah. Every every black person gets that. Yeah. Uh, but your song about your song about dreamers is particularly about, you know, every, you, everybody should have a dream. Yes. And you should be entitled to have that dream. That's right. Yeah. And that kind of fits into the, that whole, the dreamers. Right. You know, and uh, I want to have a, want to make a dream, want to dream, want to, want to tell the world about my dream. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. I'm a dreamer. Yes, I'm a dreamer. That's the kind of, the feeling of it, and it's, uh, and uh, my wife pointed it out to me that, hey, that's what it is. You know, you're, that's the dreamer. That's yeah. the dreamer. Yeah, and that's that's my my story. You know, and say, you know, when you're still at it and you're still dreaming. Yeah, I'm still yeah. dreaming. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see the world change. You yeah. know, I want to. It's it's moving. It's not fast it's enough. Moving slow. Yeah, yeah it's moving. Yeah. You know, but we got a whole lot of. You know, volunteers and soldiers here. We're going to yeah. get them to go and do some work. Yeah. Like clean the bathroom, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> because it stinks back there. Oh, come on. <laughs> let, me, uh, let, me, uh, let me wrap up by just saying, um, you know, again, you, you uh, were, were certainly um, sort of informed by your friendship with Lou Reed. And uh, and he's he's not here anymore. Uh, do you still stay in touch with with his widow, Lori Anderson? Lori called me about three four days ago. She says, "Listen, I have some dinner for you if you want to come over and get it." Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I didn't buy that. That's great. But uh, uh, you know, Lori, Lori is Lori. She is. Uh, I won't call her Lori Reed, but I'll just call her Lori. Yeah. Uh, she was. Um, she is phenomenal. Calls me up there. Says, "Hey, how about coming over and having dinner? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cook dinner." Yeah. You know, I said, um, "Well, you've got a bunch of great friends. You've yeah. had an incredible range of connections and stories. You've played yeah. music and met and hung out with so many amazing people. And we appreciate you coming by and stopping yeah, by yeah. here. Yeah. So let's get back to music, if you would, please. Help me welcome back to the stage um, one of uh, one of New York City's proudest uh, citizens, Mr. Garland Jeffries. Thank you. Thank you.